I'm going to add a domain into Azure Active Directory, but we're not starting out at the portal.azure.com like you'd think. We actually need to go into the portal.office.com. You could also go to admin.microsoft.com. Either one will get you there. And while we're in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center at portal.office.com, this is where we add our domains. So without adding in the domain first, you can't add your users using that domain. So while I'm in portal.office.com, I'm going to go to where it says settings, go to domains, and you can see all the different domains that I've added in so far. I'm going to click on add domain. Now you have to have already purchased a domain. So for instance, I'm at GoDaddy, I'm in my login, and we can see that I've got several different domains that I've already purchased. So if you haven't done that yet, you can go to GoDaddy, you can go to Network Solutions, you can go to many different places, register.com, and you can buy a domain. Now, once that domain is purchased, you're going to see it in your list of domains. I recommend GoDaddy for the Microsoft Azure Active Directory only because they make a special provision to be able to add that in more easily. Otherwise, there's some additional steps, but you don't have to do it. You can use any service that you'd like. So I'm going to choose this particular domain that I've got here. And I'm going to add that one since I already own it. If you don't already own the domain, then you can't verify that you own it and you'll never be able to receive email on it or be able to use it properly. It'll end up as an unverified domain, which you can use for testing purposes, but not for actual production. So I'm going to choose to use this domain. Click next. And here's what I was talking about where with GoDaddy, it's a much easier thing. So if you choose to sign in with GoDaddy, all you got to do is choose verify and it'll say, hey, you're good to go. Otherwise, you choose a different domain host. You would choose which one that is. And just for testing purposes, I'll just say network solutions. And then what you'll do is you'll go into the DNS record portion and you're going to add a TXT record. So you're going to add the text record and then you're going to add in the text name is going to be the at symbol. The text value is going to be this MS equals and then the time to live, which is your you know TTL. Uh, you're going to go ahead and choose 3600 or whatever your provider defaults to. Now, after you add these this text record, it's just a single record. After you add this text record, it takes about 30 minutes. So don't think it's going to happen right away that you're going to be able to start using this. So wait 30 minutes, come back, and then click the Verify button. After you click the Verify button, then you'll be able to use it right away. Now, if you're lucky enough to have already signed up with GoDaddy, which, by the way, they are not a sponsor, it's just the way Microsoft does it, then you can click Verify, and it's just going to verify by logging you in to GoDaddy. And you can see it's verifying my domain, and it's done. I've already done it. Also, Microsoft will update your DNS records so that way everything points back to, to Microsoft as needed. And if you click on more options, you can go ahead and select the one that you want. So I'm going to choose to let Microsoft add the DNS records and then click continue. Now, this next section is if you're using Microsoft 365 for email. If you're not using them, if you let's say you're using your own Exchange server, then you'll definitely want to uncheck this. Otherwise, it's going to point everything to Microsoft. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use Microsoft for this. So I'm going to let it create these records and click Add the DNS records. And I'll click Connect. And then it's going to configure those records. And then it's done. Now, I'm not going to choose the next steps and all that kind of thing because I already know what's going on. So now we see the new domain, the PAC Info Sys, we see that it's healthy. Now, if you don't have a verification, then you're going to get something like this, incomplete setup and incomplete setup. And the only problem with that is, is you may not be able to receive email until it says that it's healthy. But if you're not choosing it for email, you're just choosing it for Active Directory, then you're just fine the way it is. I did both, so I can use it for both Azure Active Directory as well as Microsoft 365. So now I'm in the Azure portal, and let's say that I'd like to create a user. And I can create the user here, or I can create it in the admin.microsoft.com. The good thing about creating it at microsoft.com or the admin portal is that I'll also be able to assign a license for email and things like that. But if I want to use it for Azure Active Directory, then I can also just create it here. So now I've chosen the username 
And I'm going to click the drop down and I should see my new domain name, which I just added. And there it is. Fantastic. Now I can receive email on that domain. Otherwise, if you don't add in a domain, you can receive email on the name at the onmicrosoft.com that you chose when you first created your account. But you want to actually add a real email address and that's how you do it. I'll go ahead and finish this off and I'll choose to auto generate the password although you can manually do that. Here I can add this user to groups and uh, Azure Active Directory roles if I'd like. And I can choose things like the uh, user location and I'll go ahead and do that. And I can also put in job title and other things, which I don't really need to do. I'll just click create. Okay, so that's all done and I've used my user's account. Now, if I want to go and do this so that user also can get email because I have to purchase a license, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the home at Microsoft 365 Admin Center, which you can get to at portal.office.com. Log in with the same user account that you logged in to, to portal.azure.com. And then you can go ahead and assign that license. Now, again, this is only if you need to assign a license for a particular reason. So I'm going to go to either the active users or I can just click on the bottom here where it says edit a user. Either way is fine. I'll put in the username, click edit user, and now I can go to licenses and then I can add in that license that I need. If, so that is how you add a domain into the Azure portal as well as Microsoft 365.